Hey everyone, I'm Bernardo and welcome to the Main Street News. Disneyland Paris, with its intricate theming and a level of detail unparalleled in the world of Disney parks, should be the crown jewel of the castle parks around the world. But decades of financial trouble, neglect and a lack of expansions make it seem small, old and inferior to the other offerings in Disney's lineup. And this one is the good park in the Paris Resort. Let's not talk about the other one just for now. So, in this four-part series, we will imagine a plan to revitalize the Disneyland Park. This plan intends to remove attractions and constructions that were out of place or just don't meet today's standards anymore, fill in some holes within the park, and most importantly, add the expansions that should have been added a long time ago. Main Street is also the only land of the park that has no alterations whatsoever because I think it's perfect just the way it is. We will be going from left to right, so today let's focus on Frontierland and Adventureland. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next parts and so much more. Now, put on those Imagineering hats and let's get to work. Being one of the best designed theme park lands in the world, Paris's Frontierland didn't need a lot of work, and what has been done had to be rather hidden and in plain sight, so as not to diminish what's already there. There are two major additions to this land, and two relocated and slightly rethemed offerings, plus some more retail space and toilets. The two new attractions are the table service restaurant Ghostly Delights, right next to the Phantom Manor, with an entrance and exit via the cemetery, and an addition of a nighttime show that for the purposes of this plan was just called Phantasmic, but could be anything really. During the process of imagining a new park, it became apparent that we need a second nighttime show that will split the crowd between this offering in Frontierland and the firework display at the castle. The highly themed haunted restaurant was such a no-brainer and I can't believe no one's done it yet in any of the parks around the world. In the vein of the original haunted mansion, it should be a mix of hilarious comedy and a spooky vibe with just that hint of a crazy museum of weirdness, rather than the equally great darker and more sinister approach of Phantom Manor so as to have a slightly different offering and a more light-hearted approach for this dining venue. The idea is basically to add a kitchen, dining room and sitting room scenes to the main ride, but instead of the doom buggy, it's tables and chairs. And you also get served delicious and nicely themed food. What could be better? Then there's a train station and the playground, which both had to move. The train station, including the track, had to go further to the northeast to create space in Adventureland for Indiana Jones, and the playground fell victim to the new phantasmic viewing area. In this corner, there's also a new passage that leads you under the train tracks into an entirely new Winnie the Pooh area, and fitting with this more animal-centered land, the playground was rethemed to Chippendale as to have a bit of a transition from Frontierland into the Critter's Woods. This new Miniland, with an upgraded version of Tokyo's Winnie the Pooh ride at its heart, which is accessible through Winnie's house, also includes the inevitable gift shop, which took over Rabbit's house, a snack service offering at Eeyore's, and a Honeypot, a counter service restaurant that serves mostly sweet afternoon tea style dishes but also some savory options inside a honeypot that has lots of moving bees coming out of the walls and ceilings and circling over guests' heads, flowing honey on the walls and honeycomb tables and seats. The central icon for this miniland is the larger-than-life central tree that serves as theming for the octopus-styled flat ride which has bee-themed ride vehicles around and around the tree all day, guarding the precious honey in the beehives in the branches above from two eager silly bears. 
The rest of the land is mostly shrubbery, two rivers and the houses of the other inhabitants of the woods that have no other purpose than to look good and provide backdrops for photos and character meet and greets. With that, we finish Frontierland, so let's go to Adventureland. Similar to Frontierland, Adventureland stays the way it is as much as possible. The difference between the two lands is, though, the incredible amount of undeveloped land that is available, or could be made available by moving the train tracks just a bit further. The additional space opened by this relocation of the tracks creates a big enough area between the Temple of Peril and Colonel Hatties to just about fit Anaheim's Indiana Jones ride, which would make this part of Adventureland almost a indie mini-land. You could even consider adding the Pizza Outpost to this mini-land by some retheming. The Indiana Jones ride includes a tiny shop and some toilets at the entrance and exit of the attraction. There's yet another big store right in front of the two indie attractions, replacing the current offering. To hide the new sizable indie show building, the train enters a tunnel in Frontierland which opens up into a new show scene for the train ride depicting a luxurious jungle with plenty of animatronic animals. The area around the Temple of Peril always used to be a super awkward dead end. It wouldn't be any longer with the new additions to the long dormant expansion pad between Temple of Peril and Pirates of the Caribbean, as the walkway now circles back around the little lake into Pirates' caves on the back of Skull Rock. This new shortcut is also home to four new offerings, most importantly the Dole Whip snack service, but also the Tiki Room, which inexplicably has so far been absent from the park. The attraction was most likely cut due to language barrier concerns, but I am absolutely confident that having alternating shows in English and French would be acceptable for guests. Anaheim's tropical hideaway bar and snack service offering was also brought into the area. Last but not least, a Stitch family ride. Stitch's Jungle Splash, an interactive boat ride. Take for instance Europa Park's Whale Adventures. This attraction lets guests shoot water at moving and interactive targets, characters and even other guests. These can also retaliate from several spots in the queue. We have now completed the Adventureland and Frontierland parts of the project, but remember that we are still missing both Fantasyland and Discoveryland. The plan for these two lands is enormous, and because of that, each one of them will have its own separate video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss the next parts. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Thank you so much for your time and have a magical day.